Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi, and welcome to part two of the professional Photoshop portrait retouching series on slrlounge.com. Now, in the last tutorial, we basically got you guys from getting our raw file into uh, Camera Raw, and we brought it into Photoshop. Now we're going to go over setting up our uh, brushes that we need to basically remove the detail, and in the next tutorial, we're going to actually cover the removal of unwanted detail in our images, such as blemishes and lines we want removed. Now to do this, we're going to use the healing brush set of tools. And there's three particular tools we're going to use. One is the spot healing brush, one is the healing brush tool, and one is the patch tool. Now I've set these to uh, different hotkeys. Normally they're set all defaulted to J. I've set one to J, K, and P. Uh, and if you guys want to change, you can set whatever hotkeys you guys want. But if you guys want to change your hotkeys, just go to edit, go to keyboard shortcuts, and then uh, under here you want to click on tools and then you can basically rename or change the shortcuts for all of the different tools available for Photoshop. Now I used K because basically K is previously set to this rotate 3D objects tool which I never use and P is set to the pen tool which I use but not that frequently so I don't really mind uh, giving it up to have that on the patch tool which I use quite often. So. Now going a little bit into the healing brush tools, they all work basically the same way. Basically what you're doing is each one of these will take uh, an area of image, uh, basically your sample area. It's going to take that sample area and it's going to use that sample information to replace the target information, which is the area that you're writing over. And it does that by basically kind of creating a little blend or a little transition in that target area using that sampled information. However, each one of them does it in a slightly different way. I'm going to select the Spot Healing Brush tool by hitting J. I'm going to zoom into my image. Now the Spot Healing Brush tool basically works by uh, doing kind of all the work for you. You're not actually having to choose a sample area. You have a few different presets. The newest one for CS5 is Content Aware. And in Content Aware, basically, you can select a tiny area of the pixels it's going to basically guess what should be in that area based on the content around it. And for the most part, it does a pretty good job. If I select this strand of hair, for the most part, you can guess that I wanted to remove that strand of hair, and it does a pretty good job of removing it. I'm going to undo that. So that's kind of the, the setting that I typically would use it on, content aware. If you guys are on CS4, you guys don't have content aware, then proximity match does a pretty good job of that as well. Now, the next tool uh, is the Healing Brush tool, and with this tool you have a little bit more control. This time you're going to actually sample the area that you want to uh, target, or sorry, the sampling area. So you're going to hold Alt to sample, and then you're going to draw over the target area. So I'm going to sample from this area below, I'm going to draw under the area above, and you'll see as you draw, the sampling area moves along with the targeting area, and then it calculates that transition and does a blend on its own, based on my chosen sample area. So this is nice because it allows you to have a little more control exactly what is being sampled from. Um, the next tool we have is the patch selection tool. Again, it works the same way, except this time instead of doing a brush, we're going to basically use the lasso tool to make a selection. So I'm going to show you guys we're going to make a selection around this little line on our forehead. And then we can drag that selection over uh, another area that we want to sample from. I can even fade it by hitting Control shift f or Command shift f on a Mac, and I can fade down that transition however I want. Hit OK, and then it basically calculates the blend based on what I've selected. Alright, now I'm going to go back to my history panel and undo everything, go back to our original version. Now because of the way that the healing brushes work, uh, to get the most out of them, there's a couple adjustments that I like to make with the brush settings themselves. Now you'll notice that if we select the uh, healing brush tool and we sample from an area like the skin over here and we draw near an area that has high contrast, like close to this hair right here, you'll get less than desirable results because what's happening is basically it's blending using some of this darker area with the sampled area and you get kind of that nasty fade in those areas of high contrast. So to have more control over this, we're going to basically set up brush presets for our healing brush tools. So let's do that right now. What we're going to do is let's first select our spot healing brush. We're going to go up to the brush settings and I'm going to reduce my hardness to 0 and my spacing to 1. These are just kind of the default settings and I'll adjust basically from each brush from there. But the important thing is that we don't basically use this uh, round shape with the brush because the round shape is too uniform. It's going to pull uh, the sample from too large of an area. Basically it doesn't give us enough control. So what I want to do is first decrease the roundness to 25% so we have a nice slim oval shape and I'm going to change the angle. I like to work with three different angles. One is at 125 degrees and we're going to save this as the first preset so 
what we're going to do right here is we're going to click on the brush and then go over to the presets. We're going to click on the new preset button and I'm going to call this left angle. And then we're going to go back to the brush preset. I'm going to set up a right angle at 50 degrees. Same everything else. We're going to same same hardness, same spacing. Uh, we're going to adjust the size every time we use the brush so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to set up actually default size of 15. I can go back and adjust that previous one too if I want. We're going to click here again and go back to our brush presets. I'm going to go add a new one again. This is going to be right angle. And then we're going to go back and I want one flat angle. So on this time I'm going to change the angle to zero. This is our flat brush. And I'm going to go back and hit new. We're going to go flat angle. And then we can update that left angle if we want just by, uh, I'm going to go back and change the space uh, angle to 125. We now have that larger size, so I'm just going to go to left angle and we'll delete this one and then just add a new one and we'll call it left angle. All right, so those are the three I like to use. Now you'll notice that if we select the left angle brush and we bring it over an area, we have a lot more control over that kind of preciseness. We can get in really close to that high contrast area without affecting it. So watch this. I'm going to select my, this is the spot healing brush right now. I can draw close to a high contrast area and it's not going to affect uh, kind of, it's not going to pull the same amount of detail out of that high contrast area and give me that darkening uh, when it calculates that transition. We're going to do the exact same thing with the healing brush tool. By the way, before I forget, let me go back to the history so we have our original. We're going to do the same thing with the healing brush tool. Um, I'm going to go back to the size. We're going to go to 15 pixels. Again, with each of these brushes, you want to work with a size that is as close to basically the blemish or the detail that you're removing. You don't want to use a brush that's too large. Again, we're going to go to 125 degrees for the left, 25 uh, roundness, and that's going to be our left angle. I'm going to do the same thing. This time, this is going to be our right angle. We're going to go 50 degrees. Right angle. Whoops, I actually spelled that wrong. Can I rename it? Yes. Right angle. And then let's do our flat again. So this one's going to be our flat, zero angle. And then we're going to hit new flat angle. OK, so now we have all three of the, the presets that I like to use set up. Now we basically would choose the right brush preset for the job. So typically, mo more often than not, I'm actually using the left angle brush. I don't need to switch that often, but when I do need to switch, I have the other one set. So for example, if I want the healing brush tool, I can now get in and kind of really make fine adjustments to these small areas of detail without affecting other higher contrast areas around it, just like this and it's not going to affect these other neighboring areas nearly as much as if we were using a rounded brush. Alright guys, so now that we've set up these healing brush presets and we've learned a little about the brush, uh, the healing brush tools, let's move on to actually fixing and removing blemishes from our images.